Hello, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Dr. Frank is on his way. He said there's a, a close part of the 101, so he'll be here shortly. He's been here in a minute. So uh, we uh, had discussed having these meetings all through the summer. It looks good. I'll see if I can get the uh, speaker lined up this week for next month. We'll try the last Saturday of every month. And uh, I'll come down on Friday and get set up. And Saturday we'll have our meetings. Uh, anybody have suggestions as to who you'd like to hear? How about Captain Harris? Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> it's probably too close to the border. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, you asked for suggestions. We'll see if Joe Biden can show up. Thank you for working here. When he does, he's not there. Tom up, Tom will show up. <laughs> yeah, show up for sure. But we can, uh, we can ask uh, Dave Hodges. Maybe he'd like to come oh, again yeah. and speak. Oh, how about Andy Diggs? Okay. How about Governor? Yeah. Our governor. Yeah, well, that'd be good. He has a hard time talking to his folks. J.T. Harris. Yeah, if we did that, we'd, there'd be too many in the room. We have to have people to fill the room. Well, that'd be a horrible thing to have too many people. Yeah, well, the only thing we have to do is RSVP. You have to have a ticket to get in. Yeah. If we get more than 45, we're going to have a problem in here, obviously. Standing room only in the back. But we have to get that side, right? We hope we have that problem. So, anyway. Uh, but, um, just to give a little update, I'm going to start the camera. I've got the Disney's or did I already? I may have. Yeah, it's recording. What do you know? Uh, I bought some new wireless mics. The uh, handheld microphone's not working today, so it's a good thing I bought wireless mics. I have a good quality one here for the speaker. And uh, this seems to work. I need to find my wired mic so I can plug it in over here. We can put four microphones on that, plus the one that came with it, which doesn't work anyway. So, uh, in any event, the um, website, I have to date, I, I have to date my talk. I try to update it as early as possible. And let's see if I can find, this is manlyz.com. This is my main site, and the reason it is I have my COVID-19 page, the currency page, events, my wife's Sunday school class, they record that on Sunday and I upload it for them. The uh, news items that I find, I just kind of stick things up here of interest. There's a long bus tour from uh, Freedom's Phoenix. Then, let's see. Let me find the Freedom's Phoenix site. If I go right here, I, I like uh, Opera. It lets you build these menus. I can go here. Williams Phoenix had to put up the article again, my Arizona Breakfast Club. So I usually get an article up at least one week before the meeting and link it to the Arizona Breakfast Club page, ArizonaBreakfastClub.org. So if you check that periodically, uh, if there's any changes, we'll have that posted, I hope, at least in the day before the meeting. If something comes up, we need to change something. Now. Always check it on Friday. So, uh, but the articles, and the article once it goes on Freedom's Phoenix, Donna has to force it to go to the top of the page periodically and it works its way down. That's how that site works. Uh, sometimes if you just read the headlines on the page, you'll know what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't even need to read some of the articles, just the headline will tell you what's, yeah. what it's about. Freedom Phoenix is one of the best news aggregators out there. Yeah. I don't think. There's another one that I uh, I haven't looked at much, but it's JohnBWellsNews.com. He's got some good guests on his show, and uh, I like to listen to John. But I don't have the time to listen to all the programs that I want to listen to. I think I'll retire so I can have time for that. Right? Well, Claire made this for me, so I wear my Bitcoin tie. That's my hope for retirement. Yeah. yeah. You're not all well, that. Well, it hit a real nice number about six weeks ago, and then Bitcoin crashed again. I lost yeah. two thirds of what I had. So, but uh, two thirds is still more than I've had in the past. 
So I'm hoping that uh, hoping that we'll go back. I may say Bitcoin will hit 100 to 300 thousand by the end of the year. If that's the case, I, and I have 10 Bitcoin, I'll be okay. We have to pay the government the 50 percent tax, and still have something left over. So we'll see. But, Why do you uh, pay tax on Bitcoin? I don't know how they're going to You know, the criminal organization is going to steal from you no matter what. Because they have guns in their hands and congressmen and judges in their back. Well, they say, if, 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 if you had, let's say I have $100,000 of Bitcoin and I convert it to another coin, that's taxable somehow. And if I own gold coins and I change them for silver coins, they're still an asset that hasn't been liquidated yet. Until it touches U.S. dollars, it shouldn't, there shouldn't even be a tax considered. So, and yeah, that's beside the point. I'm not worried about it yet. I haven't taken anything out. So, but um, mining is not the way to make money. If you have, happen to have mining machines, good for you. But to go out and buy one and expect it to to make enough to pay for itself is probably not a good idea. It's not working out. That the mining thing isn't working out. Well, it's, yeah, for me. Because I got, that's how I got paid, is they gave me miners to mine in my wallet. I didn't have to buy them. But where Bitcoin was, I covered everything for a while. But uh, yeah, if you, were to, if you were to go out and buy a machine today for $8,000 and plug it in and pay for the hosting and pay for the electric, then you know, you're better off just buying Bitcoin than have it. Plug in your Tesla, will that make the machine go down? Plug in your Tesla or what? Well, then where the Bitcoin is being bought, you can do Yeah, well, your Tesla is not a, not a uh, the one thing that Elon missed was the fact that the Tesla uses no energy over the life of the car that if you just drove against the vehicle. But the point I'm getting at is that when you buy the Tesla, we're cutting down all the power plants. Yeah. Why the cars are running for everybody's expensive cars? Plugged in when you get home. Yeah. 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 Well, the power goes yeah. on. These people will be able to go anyway. That might be a good thing. The, uh, the, if you recall the meeting we had at Jesus Point about a year and a half ago, we had a breakfast club at Dunamis where they had their sales presentation. And, uh, they were telling us it was not true. But, uh, I don't know if you can hear coming out of How's this? Is it better or worse? I can change the volume up here. I can change the tone too. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. I see. Is that better? It seems better. Yeah. If you go back to the podium, there might not Testing one, two, three. I can't I turn the trouble off. Are you in the field there? Is that other one on sitting on the desk? No, it's not on. Do you really need a speaker? Yeah. Well, the video would be better if we had some sound. Well, it's back up again. Mike doesn't need it. I still need that at the end. Well, I can turn this one off. And this is it. Temporary one that I'm going to use when I talk. Frankly, use this one and see how this one works. That's better. But it's not yet. Testing one, two, three. This is probably a better bike and it's more expensive. Uh, I'll take this one off. Testing one, two, three. And I'll adjust it when Frank is speaking. So, anyway, the idea is to get a good, good audio. Last month wasn't very good. The camera has to pick up the sound in your room. And, uh, as a result, I mean, I do have a mic I can put on that, but I don't know the battery for it, and I've never used it. That camera came with all kinds of attachments I've never used, but uh, it's been a decent little camera. Uh, this and the Michael here with his $25,000 camera in the back, because he did really good video. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the whole point of the video is just to have a, a copy of the meeting. 
So I've got uh, audio mic up here. I'm going to record audio on here in case the audio doesn't come out very well. So it gives me an option. But uh, anyway, anybody have any questions about things and any interests of Where's Ernie and Donna? What was that? Where is Ernie and Donna? I have no idea. Yeah. You don't keep on No. Is uh, <laughs> doing a lot of podcasts rather than live radio. Probably in New Hampshire. Yeah, they were up at the Fort Fest or whatever it was. Yeah. So they, uh, you can check Free the Streams website. They have the things on there. They've got the Love Bus Tour where they talk about things. I, I figured maybe September if they're back in town, Ernie can come and give us an update about his trip. Travels with Ernie. Yeah. I think he, um, he mentioned uh, recently in one of his podcasts that they were back in the fall sometime. Yeah, in the fall sometime. I texted Donna and suggested that Ernie, if he wants to, he can speak to me about their trip. <coughs> she didn't answer me on that topic yet, but uh, I generally don't text Ernie. Sometimes I'll be listening to the show and if there's a problem with her audio, I'll text her and say, audio's not good or whatever. Um, but she always posts the, the Breakfast Club info. When I write an article, <clears throat> I'm listed as a writer. So I write an article, post it, and it doesn't show up. She has, to, she has to redo it and post it. There's something wrong with my account and they haven't figured out what. However, if I this story I posted, as an event instead of, instead of an article and they posted it. She doesn't know why it's doing that. But they they developed that site over time, just adding more and more things to it. And to have somebody try to work out it now is a nightmare. <laughs> yes. Jerry, the music that we're hearing, is that your music or is that Danny's music? That's Danny's. You turn it off? Let's turn well we close the door. Is that off? Yeah, it's the window turn. We have your audio. Right there. Good. So that's all. I got another question. Yes. Is it just me, or uh, does it seem like Dr. Frank is late every freaking time? I expected that. Every freaking time the man is late. <laughs> I said every time the man is late. Ernie's not here. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. He does a good time. Thing. We're just fine. We're. Uh, Going over some things about future meetings. And uh, get your coffee and relax. Thank you. I reserve this table for you. Oh, good. I might wipe the liquor a little bit. Too. Okay. Okay. So, hello. 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 We're ready anytime you are. You're good, all right. Well, first, uh, I apologize for being tardy. I know Ernie could be crampled. Oh, wow, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, we, uh, that, have you guys get hit with that traffic this morning? Yeah. Oh, I missed it. All right, so you know what I'm talking about. I remember it should be a 10 minute drive, and it turns like 25, 30 minutes, so I apologize. Like, so. Do you think I need that? Okay. Yeah, it sounds better on that. Okay. Well, at least you guys understand, but I didn't think they weren't going to believe this. I couldn't believe this. So. All right. All right. So you guys get to meet my daughter, little Fei Fei. She was born on Donald Trump's birthday, so she'll be on her, she's had her birthday. We get reminders of it with our tech, like my tweet that was a birthday, and then my daughter, so she'll be here in a minute. Her birthday is on the 14th, June 14th. Wow. June 14th is Flag Day, and my daughter, she's already learning to negotiate very well. Uh, I'll tell you. <laughs> And I brought a little little funny thing here for you. I actually own the original Shrunk the Game, if you guys have seen this. I actually have an unopened version I got from the gold and silver store at CC uh, Gold and Coin. So if I see you guys are trying you guys aren't, but we actually played it. It's a fun game. It's uh, it came out in the 80s. Yeah, and it's uh pass around sitting there. I mean, fan anyone wants to see it, check it out. Um there's one there. But the thing is it's like Monopoly, except at the end of Monopoly, then then you have to start negotiating, you do the big ass. So it's like Monopoly with the negotiation part to it. <laughs> Alright. We're gonna auction that off today? Auction? Yeah. Well, how about that? Yeah. Alright, so I have 
so I did this for you because I was trying to think, you know, it's been a while. This is your second, this is the second meeting now, right? The second, second meeting now. Right. Yeah, it's the second meeting. The second meeting is what you guys have had. So I wanted to go over a couple of odds and ends. And uh, there was about the big picture about we talked about the culture, the culture war, right? And the culture war, and then also some issues of Bitcoin I wanted to bring up, because you guys are a little bit of all over the map, and it's been, what, a year or so since we yeah, really been getting into things. Uh, I also act as doctor sometimes, uh, as Terry knows as well. Yeah, it's just kind of a hobby playing doctor. But um, I know the issue with uh, this little pandemic that's been going around, at least the pseudo uh, concern, I addressed that a little bit, some ideas with vitamin C, some interesting research with vitamin C, and also at least a couple of views I have with the pseudo vaccine. Um, uh, it's funny, my patients come in and I specialize in prostate cancer, for them, but most of you probably know, it's all I deal with is advanced prostate cancer cases. But uh, over the last year, two, I get two questions that trump <laughs> uh, the prostate cancer in my office. Number one is, what do I think about marijuana? Every guy now is asking me about weed. It's the number one question now. This is before they even legalized it. And the second is, of course, my view of the vaccine and all that. So I get that a lot, and, uh, on, and Ernie gets a lot of questions on the radio about it, so I just thought I'd a few things on there. Um, so I'll, I'll hit all those topics, and then if you have any other questions along, along the way, I don't mind at all. No questions or something else, that's fine. Um, the first thing, uh, an interesting joke, uh, what is the difference between a conspiracy theory and the mainstream media? Nothing does. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. I know. What's that? About four months. Ah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> eight months, but that's what it says. About eight months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good one. You figured yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. And that seems to be what's going on in so many areas that we talk about, you know, with Freedom's Phoenix and with this group. You know, it's astounding, especially with the COVID deal. But everything you can talk about, Jeffrey Epstein, conspiracy theory, and we have to give credit, whether you love or hate him, to, to uh, Alex Jones. You know, he was one of the first to actually have enough guts to stand up on that topic, but 15 years ago, talking about Jeffrey Epstein and, and your buddy at Bill Clinton, you know. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, really I love you, though. I, 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 I just love you being here. I voted for Bill Clinton twice before I found out he was a rage. So you got, you got, think about it, you got Epstein, how many things have we heard and they, they keep changing? Um, I mean, mainstream media, uh, I mean, this whole audience already knows how bad and visible they are, but they had a new study that just came out, uh, two, two back to back, saying that, the, was it 65% uh, of all Americans do not trust uh, the mainstream media? Um, actually, worldwide, it was a Reuters poll that just came out, saying that we are dead last in every industrial society, and all of you, all of, with, with, with Europe, Northern Europe, and Asia, that America now, this is, this is earth shattering, but maybe not to you guys, is the least trusted news of its own people. And we were, we were of the top 10% just 10 years ago. Now we're dead last. That just came out two days ago. Um, so it gives you a sense of, of just that the system has lost the narrative. You know, it's what a lot of us have known for some time and waiting for. But it's that loss of the narrative the system can't control. And it's like trying to grab on the back of a tiger with, 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 with the tiger's tail, and they can't hold on. So I think we're at that Jody Foster moment. I've said on the show quite a bit. Um, you know, Jody Foster from that movie Contact, many of you have seen. And I think that's such a beautiful summary of kind of where, of where we're all going. If you remember in Contact, uh, you know, Jodie Foster winds up, you know, trying to visit some aliens, spoilers here. But the idea, if you remember in the show, is that the aliens gave us some, a blueprint to travel to meet them in this sphere. And you just put a human being in the sphere and ship it, you know, light speed and everything's fine. Well, the engineers, the humans, said, well, we know how to do this better, and they bolted a chair in the sphere for her to sit on. You guys remember that movie? Yeah. So she's in the chair, and she's like, are you sure? That wasn't the plan. 
So they bolt her in. Oh no, our engineers and evidence based you know, you know, SAC people told you you're supposed to be in the chair. And they strapped her in, and she's going and it's starting to shake. And it's shaking more and more as she's going lights, light speed as she's flying. And it, it's violently, just violently, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And finally she sees her little pocket compass that came from a Cracker Jack, by the way, if you guys remember the story. A little Cracker Jack, a little toy she had, and it's floating peacefully out there. And she all of a sudden clicks that I should just let go. And she disconnected from her restraints and immediately started floating peacefully. And then she looks back and she sees the chair shaking and shaking, and then boom, it just collapses, realizing she didn't disconnect, she'd been dead. And that moment is what I've been talking about often with, 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 with Ernie and I on the show, which is it's just that, that moment where the system can't hold on, and many of us keep trying to, maybe not you guys, I know I've made this problem, of trying to still connect to the other side, connect to the system, not because I want to be part of it, but because I do believe that you can't understand the other side. I mean, you need to understand how all the people are seeing things. Doesn't mean you have to agree, but the more that we disconnect from each other, you break down the culture. And that, to me, is what this whole thing has been, is a culture war issue. And, you know, it's a fact that, can, this is a fact, conservatives get 35% of their news, media, and culture from the left. Okay? In other words, in other words we actually get pollinated in many ways from the left. We listen to the left. We may not always like it. We may not even try to do it. But many of us, you know, we actually hear things from the left. Hollywood movies, Erin Brockovich, you know, she's talking about how bad business is. Or, or to give you another example, uh, one that all of us have dealt with, is going to the airports. You know, they play CNN in airports. They don't play Fox News in airports. I mean, now they've got of CNN too. But what I mean is, we, people like us have been forced to see CNN, but they don't have to watch Fox. How about you're asking liberal how they would feel if they took, if the U.S. government took, or took a dollar of your tax money every year and gave it to Fox News? Just, just ask, ask your little friends how they feel about it. They say, I would never put up with that. I'd say, well, do you realize that conservatives have their money taken out to pay for PBS every year? I mean, I mean it, it, it's like but they don't even understand. They don't see the other side to it. So conservatives are, are often being... Whether we want to see it or not, we're hearing the other side, at least 35%. Whereas the left gets less than 5% of their news, culture, uh, and, and, and information from the right. And we have one exception right here in this room, and, and to yourself, to your credit, by the way. Uh, I'm always very uh, uh, honored that you're here all the time, uh, even though we might not always agree with things. But you know, you're actually an exception to something that goes out of your way. So I just want to point that out. No, 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 seriously, before we have the heckle later. But, but, but in all seriousness, I, I always have the utmost respect for you all the time, despite it. Because, I wish more, because you know, even though we might disagree, you at least understand what the other side is saying. And that's something that, that's, that doesn't really happen much in this country. And that's why I think it's important that we, that we listen to each other. But at some point, when do we start to really disconnect, like the Jodie Foster moment? And I feel like that we're pretty much there. And if nothing else, I'm not going to use myself as the ultimate, but my own bellwether, because I don't know anyone else around me that's still bother listening, listens to the other side. I'm like the only one I know, and now I'm now, I can't handle it. So right. using myself as a canary in the coal mine, if people like myself are disconnecting, then I know we're at that point where, where it's just breaking down, and then you become different cultures. And it's the one thing I hammer on that show over and over, is that we are, this is a culture war, and we have a culture. And the one thing that, uh, I mean, I don't have angry about stuff, but, except like Kamala Harris sometimes, but you know, that's a, that's a mystery. Uh, but, but I'll tell you, is when Americans think we don't have a culture. You know, for those of you that, that know, I come from Japan, I went to college in Japan, at Kansai Gai Gaku, and I spent time in China, and Russia, and other places. Um, uh, and most of the people I, I've uh, spent time with, friends, girlfriends, I don't want to get in trouble here, but you know, they're usually from other countries. And even my wife, Savarna, she comes from India. Uh, she went to uh, she went to uh, boarding school in India for how many years? 12 years? Eight. Oh, eight, eight years, yeah. So um, most people I know come from other countries, which I don't think is an accident. Uh, my grandparents raised me from the Great Depression, but I start to see the culture. And when you come back from overseas, and I don't mean going to the Cancun, I mean, you know, if you've lived in other countries for a while, you come back, 
you see our own fishbowl. Yes. I lived in Iran, Malaysia, and Venezuela. Really? How long? Yeah. Huh? How long? Well, I lived in Malaysia for a year, and that's when it would be coming back to the United States. I realized that everything was a lie. I was 12 years old, I think, something like that. In Iran, uh, uh, I don't know. I, we just lived there. I, I didn't care about the politics at the time, but I knew what was going on. In, in Venezuela, I really understood the politics of the United States. Yes, you, yeah. you have to be outside the bubble to see the bubble that, that we happen to be in. Right. But then Americans are always giving this thing that, oh, we don't have a culture, we're a melting pot. And I say, you know, you, you are so immersed in the culture. It's like someone who says that, like, I don't have an accent. Yeah. You all have a kooky accent. I speak normal like Rocky Balboa at that time, right? Because we're normal. I mean, it's just it's, the, the arrogance and the ignorance is astounding, but yet the fact that we're American, and, and it's understandable in a way because. America it has put themselves in the center of everything. We are the biggest fishbowl. I mean, we sit there, we export our culture, we export through our movies, we export our military, we also export our debt. <laughs> and we export everything to the rest of the world, and so we sit back and go, everyone else accepts the dollar, they all, they all know who you know, Michael Jackson is, they all understand, you know. But, and, and also, we're one of the only countries, probably the only country, that has this amount of success where no one is bilingual. I mean, I speak Japanese a bit, but most of us don't speak a second language. Whereas most every other country, you learn another language. Yeah. And when you learn a language, your brain changes. Who here speaks another language? Okay, yeah, so if you guys... In Venezuela, just a second, as I was like, I was the stupid American who spoke like four languages, and everybody else spoke at least four, five, and six, and more. Uh, oh, my. Yeah, I was the... I was the uneducated American. <laughs> <laughs> and it says a lot, too, uh, about how President Trump did well picking, a, picking a, a, a Melania. She speaks, like, six languages yeah. or something? Uh, I mean, it just shows that Teddy Roosevelt spoke a whole bunch. I mean, your brain really changes, and you don't know until you speak another language. Some of you already know what I'm talking about. Also, one other language count. What, no, 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 I'm sorry, what's your question? I don't have a question. I, I, just a little parody here. Yeah. Uh, you know what they call a person who speaks two languages bilingual, three languages trilingual, more than three multilingual? You know what they call a person who speaks just one language? An American! American. <laughs> 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 that is... <laughs> Do you all get that? You know, you're an uh, Afro pro. Well, no, that's a, that's a very, very key point. You know, when I, when I lived in other countries, um, if, for me, trying to speak Japanese, if I just, I would butcher the terms, or especially Chinese is a whole different world than Japanese in terms of yeah. words, I'll tell you. But no matter what you do, no matter how bad you speak, everyone says, oh, very good, you speak perfect Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> they all tell me how great it was. But yet here in America, I would be at the study abroad program at Penn State, and if someone spoke, you know, from another country, English, with an accent, I would hear people behind their back blast and say, okay, I have to just comment, like, 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 how come they're speaking English, or, 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 you know, learn to speak English, you're an American, this arrogance of Americans that you have to learn, or, I mean, even though they're speaking the language, we don't even bother. One other thing, though, is music. Music also counts as a language. For those of you that are playing music, it's a whole different language, uh, and your brain does reorient just like that, not to get too much of tangents on it. But I think it's important that you exercise your brain with a language, and when you do, it's the ultimate way to see your own culture and how you think. Because you don't even know how linear your thinking is until you have something to compare it to. It's called a control group, you know, <laughs> you, you, you do that. So I would highly recommend, she already, uh, my, my daughter, I mean, she's learning Japanese and older Chinese. Uh, she, she, she sings the song Mothra from Godzilla in perfect Japanese, Nihongo. Yeah, she will sing for you. Yeah. Now, one more thing. Uh, yeah. Everything you're saying is absolutely true. Uh, the United Nations said there's 198 nations of the world. Well, I've been in more than half of them, and just because that was my job. And uh, but I can assure you that most anywhere you go in the world, they speak English. Yeah. 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 Now that they do, it's just been a crutch for us this entire time, and it's added just to the arrogance of Americans just in general. But then you come back, and the problem is you don't even recognize you have a culture. Um, and the, the danger when you don't know you have a culture is if you don't think you have one, then you're not going to defend it. 
And that has been what this crux has been. That open borders, and you got Democrats sitting there saying, well, you know, open borders, and Republicans are just as bad hypocrites, and we all have to, we all know that deal, you know, turn the, turn the other side. You know, so when you have people coming here um, illegally and not assimilating, that's the issue. And we all know that the left likes to spin and say, you're racist and all this crap. No, no, what part of the word illegal do you not understand? It's really basic. And the concept of illegal really is about assimilation. It's not to do with, with skin color, it's assimilation. Because if you don't assimilate, if you don't know the culture you're part of, well then you become a divisive, a divisive force. And, 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 and you have, you have this, this division. Uh, when I lived in Japan, um, I, I uh, thought about being a Japanese citizen. Because, you know, I, I, was, I was dating somebody, she was cute, you know, but I don't get in trouble with it. It was a long time ago. But you know, when you're thinking about getting married, a lot of guys wonder you know, whether to be a citizen. And I looked into the citizenship. So in Japan, they won't let you. What's that? They won't let you. Oh no, you can be a Japanese citizen. Oh no, 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 you can't. I saw my professor. Oh, that's my point. Oh yeah, it's not. It's a little, it's a little different than the American people who lived there 200 years. They don't let. So first off, first let me tell you because I already looked into it. Just give an understanding. So when I when I hear the lefties sit there and tell me how racist of a country we are, I ch I offer them a gold eagle for them to no, literally a gold eagle. I still have it. Uh, to, for them to tell me which country in the world has more open uh, 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 citizenship than America. Name one. Just name one, name one, and I'll give you the gold eagle. And it's amazing, I get all the song and dance, no one can ever answer. And if, bonus point if you want to point one in later on. But no country in the world, and yet they sit back and they'll tell me how racist the nation is. And they haven't even lived, left the country, they don't speak another language, and they're telling me how racist it is. So, so anyway, so in Japan, in order to become a Japanese citizen, first off, you have to learn their history, all right? Now, here in America, it's just like, the George Washington chopped the cherry tree down? That's kind of like the history of the paper. There's a couple of questions. In Japan, you have to, it's like, it's like, it's like a two-hour test on Japanese history. Keep in mind, Japanese history is not 200 years. It's like 1,500. Right? All the feudal systems of Japan and the shoguns and I mean, you got to learn all of this. I, mean, I, 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 had, I had learned that before I went to Japan. You do all of that. Plus, you have to learn and do the whole exam in Japanese. Right? right? It's Japanese. Written kanji. They don't even give you the hiragana. This hiragana, katakana. They give you the full damn kanji. And the reason you have to learn it to that level is because the shinbun. The shinbun is Japanese for newspaper. The newspaper is written in kanji. So the whole point is, if you can't read the newspaper, then you cannot be part of the communication and the discussion of what the rules and regulations that you're voting on in the first place. I mean, I know this is beyond common sense, but yet this concept doesn't seem to get with the left or some people on the right who, who just think that none of this matters. Of course it matters. Yeah. And that's the way it should be yeah. with the Japanese. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And guess and and and, 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 and oh boy, quite a reason out here. Man, he, he and I go at this point because I know the only reason he gets angry is because I stick it to him every time. And he, he goes, yeah, you know, you're right. He doesn't have an answer for this. Well, he keeps working on an answer. But let me tell you, commenting on that, the Japanese have it down. When I was in Japan, and this is true, I saw little girls like my daughter's age. She's four now, um, in little sailor outfits on the subway going from Tokyo to Kyoto by themselves, maybe with another girlfriend, yeah, the girlfriend, okay. four or five year olds, by themselves in sailor outfits on subways. I mean, my child can't even, today you can't walk home from school without some right. DPS or someone coming arresting me for child abuse. Right. Try that, that's right. That's what the children do there, no problem. There, 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 there's no crime or corruption that way, right. okay? Now, you could say they have their act together, but at the same time, they're a monolithic society. Their culture is unified. And so when I tell Ernie, and this is, and, and, and it's, a, it's a really good discussion in essence, I think, is that, now I'm a libertarian, I'm all for freedom, we all should do whatever that, whatever that we want. In many ways, the strength of our culture is the independence that we can try other cultures and competing ideas. See, the Japanese don't like to compete ideas because they all have the same face. That's their problem, is that young people are always told, you know, you can't say anything until you become an elder, then you can say something. You have to earn your place. Well, whereas in America, we get our ideas from the youth. 
the young people come up with new ideas. After all, they say in physics, if you have a one year Nobel Prize by the age of 30, you're like an old hag, you know? You're like, you game over. You don't have your Nobel Prize by age 30. So like a lot of the new ideas in pop culture all come from young people. In Japan, it's like sit there and shut up and wait until you're 50 and 60 and then you can go do something, you see? So it is different, but you have all these competing ideas here and it's good in a way. The problem, though, is that, is, is, is that um, when you have more cultures and more ways of doing things, and here's the key, you need more rules and regulations to keep them all in check. That's the key. It's inversely proportional. I think Donna even made some jokes. She called it the Tambori rule or something. I forget what she called it. Uh, that was funny. But it was the, it, it, we should have given a different name for it. But that's inversely proportional. The freedoms you have in a culture is inversely proportional to how many rules and regulations that you have. And if you want, no, I said Ernie, if you don't want any rules, you want to get rid of government, no rules, no regulations, then we have to have a unified culture. Which he doesn't like, I mean, you know, because I'm not saying you have to you know, force a unified culture, but you can't have both. I'm going to give you guys a perfect example. Uh, Savarda, her, her uh, she comes from a Sikh family, and they're all Sikhs. They wear turbans and such. Uh, so she, she's, a, she's a jack Sikh. That's why she doesn't have a turban all the day. Uh, but but uh, her, her, her dad is a Sikh. Uh, and he's, you know, he wears a white turban, white everything, white everything. And he works in construction. And he used to tell me how, uh, and he was diehard Sikh, like he really, God bless him, he was just, you know, he's protected by the Sikh gods, you know, he's all protected. And so he would tell me how, in, when he would do construction sites, how he, and he wasn't trying to mock this, he, he was, it was a serious thing, is that he doesn't, he's the only person that does not have to wear a hard hat. But if you're in a construction site, OSHA, you have to wear a hard hat. Well, it turned out that the Sikhs, New York City, whatever, argued that a turban is their religious, you know, clothing, and they believe that they're protected by God from their turban, so nothing will happen to them. I'll just leave it there. But the thing is, is that now, what do you have? You have a culture where everyone is, you know, wears a hard hat, but one culture, religious belief, says, I'm different. I don't have to wear, I can wear a turban. Now, you know, as libertarians, we're like, hey, it's on you. You know, we all get it. But now, you know, now exactly where does that leave the construction site? How about liability? Then you need lawyers for that because, well, what if something does happen to him? Does, you know, and it goes on and on. And we can do this with every topic out there. And this is what I argue with Ernie about. And, and again, I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't mind. This is my, you know, he's not here. I'm not trying to beat up on him because you know, he can defend himself. But it, it's a great convert. But you, you, know, you guys all know Ernie. But the point is, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an interesting concept about how much. How much homogeny do we really want, or should we go back to? You know, people on the left make it seem like we're all trying to go back to Jim Crow or something. They make everything and they take extremes. No, there's something about a culture about when we say Merry Christmas, or there's, there's concepts about a culture that we're losing. I've always been really sensitive to culture because of my background and being overseas. Most Americans I found always kind of laughed at it. Probably not you, people have traveled a lot because you've seen the culture. But I'm finding now we've crossed the Rubicon because most Americans who have not traveled or don't speak another language, they now finally are starting to understand there's a culture problem. Why? Because of the famous saying, how do you cook a frog? You guys all know, right? You cook them slow so people don't notice it. When you cook it too quick, the frog jumps out, right? And that's what's happening here, is that the left got caught with their pants down with this, they really expected, wow, that was good, um, that the left really, I believe, Ernie and I were just chatting about this, that the system, conservatives were just a bunch of old people that wore Semper Fi hats and, you know, still celebrating Vietnam, and they show up at Thanksgiving dinner, and they just kind of annoy the, 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 the nephews, but that the, the older generation were just a bunch of old people watching Fox, and that was it, and you're all going to die off. And the, and, the, and the new modern young people were going to take over and inherit the wind, right? That's kind of how they saw it. And a lot of it was because the silent majority remained silent. The silent majority didn't say anything. They, they just were pushed off to AM radio with Rush Limbaugh or whatever, talk radio, pushed out and marginalized, kept off of all the TV shows, you know, except George Will, the token Republican, and they called that equal. 
I mean, think about it. How do you have news that's equal where the, every host is liberal, all the talking heads are liberal, and you have one conservative, George Will, who's like the neocon, representing 50% of this country, and they sat there and think this is equal news. And yet people on the left honestly couldn't even see the disparity. It's like white people who would say black people to the back of the bus, but all men are created equal. Like, how do you... Rectify that. It's called, there's a term for that, it's called cognitive dissonance. Yes. And that is what most Americans have dealt with, thinking that we had equal news, even though right in front of them, it's not equal representation. So, be, and with the silent majority remaining silent and not arguing, which is why Donald Trump, and people think Trump tweet, had mean tweets, even my mom, how come you can't be nice? Because it's being nice this long that led to them thinking that we didn't exist. And that is what's led to this problem. So, you know, everyone has a, has a certain culpability to it of how we got to this point, but now we have the culture issue. And Trump represents a culture. I mean, maybe not to everyone's liking, but he represents that East Coast, you know, a capitalistic, you know, bombastic, kind of a lot of you guys know, maybe your parents and grandparents. Just think, think of your own parents and grandparents if they were alive today and had to go through the TSA at the airport. Just think, you guys all know the old timers, the Archie Bunkers of our lives that we know. You imagine, just think of your parents and uncles. Think of them in today's world, how they would adjust if they could. Oh, I mean, if you really think about it, and the kids today, I mean, they think that you guys are old Munchians and you're all, and you're like not couth. Just, they don't understand the world that we came from, of what people stood up for. And so that's all been lost. But as they say, you know, uh, good times breed weak men, right? You heard that saying. And that's kind of where we're at, a bunch of yeah, snowflakes. Exactly. So it's going to change, the culture will change. But I just want to bring up that concept that it's something that ultimately this whole thing is about a culture war. One, one uh, newsworthy event to show you how much, how this is being taken down at the highest level is a topic that I don't know you guys are into, which is the British monarchy and the royals and Prince Harry. I'm sure all you guys follow the news. <laughs> yeah, well, I know you don't care, and I, that's good. I, I'm, I don't want you to care, but I do follow it a little bit because um, I do understand sociopaths. Meghan Markle, and guys, I'm not really trying to bore you with this too much, but Meghan Markle, in my opinion, has antisocial disorder. She completely does, uh, and that's that's there's reasons for that. And uh, Prince Harry is kind of a little, a little moron and just got taken up with it. But what's happening though, the key guys, is the British monarchy is the ultimate center of Western society and culture, if you think about it. But, <laughs> and, 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 I mean, I'm not saying that we're off to be like them, but remember, America came from there. Even in the old literature from the times, from George Washington and the British, we talked about how the king in, 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 in Britain, England, was like the parent, and we were the child. And we referred ourselves as the child. We were going through adolescence when you realize your parents are not always right all the time and the child leaves home. You know, you may fight with your parents, but you don't ultimately hate them, but you have, you, know, you grow, you grow wings and eventually you go. And that's what we were with England. So, but England was our mother country, our mother culture. And so, in many ways, they are the last bedrock of Western culture. I'm not saying that our culture in America is theirs, but they are a template for what has evolved from them. Now, you've got the lefties through Hollywood, through Meghan Markle, an opportunist, and now Oprah Winfrey and Barack Obama both, and I don't know if you guys know this, Barack Obama and Oprah are both injecting money and every access to Meghan Markle, and they're in San, they're, they're in San Santa Barbara, yeah, that, that's where Oprah lives. Uh, Oprah and Michael Jackson have their homes there in Santa Barbara, and that's where the that's where the royals now, the pseudo royals, are right now. They are trying. I don't know if you guys know this. This is a fact. This is not a hyperbole. They are Barack Obama and his team is actively trying to get Meghan Markle to run for politics, to run for office. They're, they they want her to run as senator in California, and then maybe for President of the United States, I'm not making this up, Meghan Markle. She's interracial, female, has the name recognition. I mean, that they're looking at her as just like the next AOC. 
and they are putting a lot of money. So you guys would have to watch Megan Mark. I think she, I mean, she, she's really she's a dumbass. But, but is that old film? Yes, I'm glad he caught it. But so I'm not, I don't, but look at AOC. Look at Maxine Waters. I mean, look, I mean even, even some Republicans. So, but sh when you have the ty entire support of Oprah and Obama and everyone around them, they are targeting for her to inject. But here's the key. It's to take down the monarchy, the ultimately the ultimate culture, because they are now destroying the reputation of the monarchy over in England. They are calling the entire media racist, and the entire monarchy is racist, and you know how the system, how it goes. Everyone's racist for whatever, whatever reason, for their own political gain and virtue signaling. That's what they're doing now, and England is going through a massive turmoil over this thing. So I'm just saying, this culture war is, is around the world, I'm sure you guys know. And one last point on the culture, I'll move on to another topic here, but is that it's not going to last. History has proven this. Anytime you try to, you know, what's the old saying? You bite off more than you can chew, eventually it falls apart. You get too many train cars locked onto your train, eventually the caboose gets thrown off the track. It, whatever analogy that you want. We saw this with Alexander the Great. You know, he's trying to expand the empire. And you get to a critical mass where it gets too big, where the culture breaks down the further you go out. And eventually the culture of your own soldiers changes the further out that they are. That happened in the Roman Empire. And it, so imagine trying to change the entire globe. You can't. That's the part that people don't get about culture, is that the culture starts in your family. All of us are Americans. But, and yet, and, but all of us probably, most of us do Christmas. Some of us might do Hanukkah. There's a slight change. Those of us that do Christmas might have our own traditions about when, when do you decorate the tree? Is it after Thanksgiving, before Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve? But we all do the same thing, but yet we all do it different ways. That's just amongst us. So, you know, the more you go further out, the more the cultures get so, so desperate that, that, they, that they don't come together. So the globalists think they can still lock us all down. They don't understand the power of culture starting from the family unit, which is why the number one thing Marxists have to do is destroy the family unit. That is what they go after. They go after their relationship with your family, they go after your relationship with your God, and they go after the relationship with your culture. Those are the three targets. I said this maybe the last time I was here, but those are the targets Marxists go after. It's in their literature. Marx put it down. You go after the culture, the God, and the family. And what have they been doing all this time? They've gone after the family, right? That's been a long time. So how come every man now is damn Homer Simpson? Whatever happened to Ward Cleaver when he actually was the head of the household? I mean, now every man, especially white man, is a joke and they're dumbass. Right. Just watch every commercial. Every commercial, you've got like a pancake commercial, and the, and the, and the, and the dad's sitting there making the pancakes and he burns them. And then, and then the, the kids come down, and the wife, who's a CEO, getting ready to go to work, you know, she's running the whole company, she's right, running some Fortune 500, and they see the dad, like some dumbass in his PJs, burning the pancakes, and they all go, Oh, Dad, let us do it. You know, here, try this, you know, whatever the pancake is next. That's what every commercial is. I'm sure you guys know. Now they just get rid of the men all together. I mean, that's what they've done recently. So Homer Simpson, you can go on, on a, a married with children. For decades, they've gone taking down the, 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 the white, not white, well, not white man, too, but just the, 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 the patriarchy and now the matriarchy. They're going after the family unit to separate that's another reason they want college to be paid for completely by the government, because they don't want us taking the kids out. They want the children from when they're born, from preschool, all the way to college, so they can document the entire time. That's what that is. So the first is you go after the family. The second is you go after the God. And I'm not necessarily a overly religious person, but you know we are a Judeo-Christian uh, based uh, country. And you know, and that's 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 part of our culture. They have to go after that. They have to sit, you know, now if you want to teach your you know, if you notice in California, if you homeschool and you teach your children about Noah's Ark, that's considered child abuse now. It's because you're actively teaching them non-science, because clearly it never happened. So now it's considered child abuse. 
<laughs> not making it up. So this is this is these wedge issues that they're putting in. Now, you know, I, I don't know if I would sit there and teach my kid that it's fact, but you know, that's not the issue. The issue is your choice to teach whatever you want to do. And 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 to call it child abuse, now they can a crime, it's it's thought crime. And that's what the left love. They don't see it that way. It's amazing. They can sit there and do this stuff and not even see that they are the enemy, and they've become the very thing that they claim that they wouldn't. You know, I mean, was it liberals in Berkeley that said, you know, I may not agree with what you have to say, but I'll defend your right to say it? And now they sit there and they cancel you and ban you and, and right. call it a crime. Right. Yesterday or the day before, I heard uh, Dennis Prager. Yeah. He wants the people, the parents, to have the children and students Record the classroom. Right. Ah, oh, that's how quick they're going to stop that one. Record what? Yeah, the classroom discussions. That's fantastic. Yeah. They're going to say, well, we're going to let our cell phones in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And that is also the narrative. I said how the, the, the frog is being cooked quicker because they really expected this to happen slow on their terms. And two things change. Well, maybe three, you could argue. Um, the one is the technology. They did not expect the technology to change as quickly where you can record things, right? And YouTube, where a politician could lie to four different groups and you couldn't compare notes. Now, you can record them and then individuals, because ABC won't run it, but I can make a montage, you know? Or how about Peter Schiff was right? He does every single clip of him saying the economy's gonna go, and you go, wow, I forgot about that, right? That's how people remember. So the YouTube videos and the media have completely shifted. Also, they were, as I said earlier, they were unaware that how the silent majority was a silent majority. They just thought, since they were the ones doing the protests, save the seals, and, and you know, they ran the media and the newspapers. They just assumed conservatives were just some dying breed going out like the dodo group. They had no, they really did. They're, most of them never even know, don't, they don't even know the conservatives. They've never been around a conservative. I know because my liberal friends, when I was in medical school, I, they, they would come to me and they'd say, you know, uh, Frank, uh, you're like, just to hate the minute, but you're the only Republican that, 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 that we know. Of course, I told them I'm a libertarian, I'm not a Republican, but the same thing. Yeah, about, as far as they're concerned, it's the same thing. But they, they told me, they said, God, you're, you know, you're not what we expected. You know, they come up, they, they want to sit there like touching me, like I'm so, you know, some curiosity, you know, from, from the freak show. And, and then one of them even told me that, uh, he said, God, you seem too smart to be a conservative. <laughs> That's what they told me. It was Dina, she said. So, yeah. so, so it made me realize just how little exposure they had. And, and, and I said, you know, that we should take a, 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 a page from their own playbook, which is called busing. <laughs> Remember the busting of the 70s? Yes. We should bust liberals and have them visit Republican homes and just bust them and force them to go to a shooting range for once and just see. And that's not what they think. But that's the, that's the difference in the culture, which I keep saying, across contamination has been lost. So anyway, those are just some, some broad points on culture. I know I, it seems like a, a general topic, but I, I think more and more people are realizing how seminal this really is and what really what we're fighting over. It's not just political points. Yeah. I, I think just one bit of feedback concept to kind of summarize mm -hmm. this a little bit is the notion of feedback. Uh, any culture, any system, any culture that's self-sustaining is a balance of various influences and forces. And if you change an input, you shift the whole system ultimately, or you can. And especially if that influence begins to build and aggregate, and it begins to change the direction of the culture of individuals and what they think and so forth. And that's what we've had. The internet, the cyber feedback loops that come as a result of that is what's transforming everything. No, you're completely right. The internet, um, I, I did mention there are two things that sped this thing up that the left didn't catch. Uh, aside from the fact they didn't realize we existed you know, over, half this, over half this country. One was the internet that just exploded um, and it took these le these people on the right, or all of us, that were told stay on AM radio and maybe Fox News is the only thing that people had. Well now, YouTube is an example. The left really did not believe 
it would be co-opted by conservatives. They thought it was going to be their platform, and it overnight got taken over by all of these voices that were suppressed that they didn't understand. It's like cortisol. If you take cort steroids, you suppress the symptoms. You suppress it, you push it down, and finally it comes out. Boom! Right? And that's what happened with the internet. So that's number one. Wait, wait one second. And then there was one second. And the second, hey, wait, 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 take a gander. What was the second thing that accelerated this that just blew their mind they couldn't figure out? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. <laughs> they didn't expect that one. And especially the fact he win, the fact that he tapped into something. And I won't go to my old Trump monologues. God knows you guys can do I can do that all day. But I will just end on this point with Trump, which is, I, it's one of the other rules I brought over and over to lefties, which is you will never defeat Donald Trump. I don't care. Well, even at the battle box, technically you might, but, you're, but then they keep thinking he's like Michael Myers or, or what's it from Friday the Thirteenth? You know, Jason from Friday the Thirteenth. It's like they keep knocking him down, like the Terminator. Just keeps coming back up. Right there it is. And, and, they, and, they, and they can't wrap their head like, but we defeated you. We 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 impeached you twice. We just keep like down and down and then it keeps coming up and they can't wrap their head. What is? And this is what I keep what I've said. Before 2016, I said you will never defeat Donald Trump unless you really understand why people are voting for him. Not what CNN says that it's all you know fake America wide again and dog whistles and people on our our lefty friends they really they think they understand who we are and they don't because remember first rule they get less than five percent except for from here uh, less than five percent of their news and culture from the other side. So they clearly do not understand who their neighbors are, what this country is doing. They are really in the bubble, and that's why they don't understand him. And so they keep trying to put other, like they're trying to make sense of this. Like they see a comet across the sky before telescopes, and it's like, wow, that must be the eye of God, the Zeus. I mean, I don't know. You know they, they can't connect the dots, and that's why those two things have accelerated. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, a couple things here real quick. Um, one of the reasons why they, they, they hated Trump for his tweets because he, he told the truth. They can't handle the truth, number one. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing in changing the culture, uh, you may have you just touched it briefly, but what they what they really try to do is change the meaning of words. Mm -hmm. And that's also, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's just Orwellian. Well, I mean, that, <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and, and the, the old thing was, uh, that in, in an age of, of universal deceit, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act. George Orwell, 1984. If you haven't read George Orwell's 1984, you got to read it. It's all laid out. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. Well, they're banning it. Did you know they're banning it from from schools now? No. Yeah, yeah. 1984. <laughs> we covered on Freedom's Phoenix four, four yeah, years ago. They're pulling 1984 out of the schools. Along with with uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, the one of the Huckleberry Finn and the Grapes of Wrath. Oh, probably that, uh, the one of all the kids on the island. I forget that. Oh, oh. Well, the 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 Animal Farm. Well, no, well, Animal Farm is another one that they're getting rid of. Animal. But the 1984 was the one, the hallmark. I mean, the whole point of it is about censorship, and the people are censoring the book about. I, mean, I never thought liberals would be the one banning and taking out 1984. Yeah, that's it's a, it blows your. They can't see the cult that they join. They, they can't see it. That's the scary part when people join a cult. They, they assume everyone else is, but they can't. And the reason also, the proof that they're the one in the cult is, in, in a sense, we're put it this way. They're the ones that have changed. Imagine you guys are, well, let's imagine thinking something in trouble. You're married, right? Some of you are still married. That's good. Let's say you're married. And you got married, and you're both Christian. You both like, I don't know, Def Leppard. You both, I don't know, whatever. Just like think, think about the things that brought you together. And you get together, and then all of a sudden, you decide, or your spouse, you decide, you know what? I'm going to become a Scientologist now. And uh, and all of a sudden I, I'm I'm, in, I'm into uh, to, to French gospel music and I'm into this and then you just all of a sudden you say you change your food now you become a vegan and all of this. Now how mad are you going to be at your partner if they can't keep up? 
Are you going to sit there and get mad at them and say, but you know what, if you're not going to be cooking vegan food with, with French gospel in the background and this, well, you just don't care and this and that and, and, and you're hateful and all of this and I'm going to leave you, I'm going to sue you. All, like, at what point of a civil person, especially if you got together with someone, you know your wife or husband is a piece of her, you want to marry him. But you're the one that's changing the deal. You're changing the rules. You're, you agree to this, and you're the one changing the negotiation, changing the contract, so to speak. Right. So if anything, you owe it to the other side. It's your job to convince the other person that a vegan diet tastes good. It's your job to have to slowly convince them. It's not the other person's job to change, to meet you, your drastic change to Scientology. And if you don't become a Scientologist, you're the, you're the enemy, but that is what the left has done. They, in their mind, they don't see that they're the ones that change. I asked my, my, one of my best friends, is, is, is black, uh, that sounds like a cliche, but he is. Uh, you guys, some of you guys know. Uh, but he, um, he went back east. I told him, don't go. He went to nursing school. I said, don't go. And he went from uh, a conservative to now all of a sudden, and he's like, Far left, it's unbelievable. You just went from one. Of the, it's, it's just watching that transition was difficult for, for all of us to see. But but um, what was I saying about the uh, what I was talking about? The design. Oh yeah, the, the change. The change. Yeah. Thank thank you. By the way, thank you. is is that is that is that they don't see the change in which they're doing? He, like he honestly don't don't see. And I asked him. I asked him the question. I said, please explain to me. This is a really good, good point to ask to anyone who's black or minority and say, if you think it's racist or all this racist, I ask them, tell me why and how this country is more racist today than it was last year, five years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago. Just by any metric, tell me how. I, I can give you Wait, wait I, 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 let me give you the list. Real quick, and then you can, you can you can tell me how, how how it's not. But I'll tell you what: there are more there are more educated minorities in this country than any country on the planet. There's more black people with with PhDs and, and college degrees than the rest of the, the world combined. You guys understand that? Yeah. Combined, there's more millionaires and billionaires. I mean, I think I think uh, well, not was it Jay Z's one? There's the other guy. Uh, the other guy that does the easy slip. <laughs> Someone else, but I mean, there, there's, there's 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 black millionaires and, and minority millionaires and billionaires than the world combined. I mean, we talked about becoming a citizen, how easy it is. We're talking about we can go on and on about uh, about crime about, about, with, with interracial relationships. You, if all all of us know. Guess who's coming to dinner? That was a movie. They made a movie about it. Today, it's every commercial beyond that. Thank God. So to, to sit back and say, if we didn't have these riots 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and now there's so much anger, how is there more anger? What can justify the anger now when, there's, when everything is improved, every single metric across the board is improved, and yet there's more anger because they're supposed to there's more racism? It's like we're going backwards. How is it the more freedoms we have and the more opportunities for everybody in the, in the nation and yet, somehow, people are being worked in the head that we're somehow worse off than we were under Jim Crow, for God's sake. So it's astounding, and I never get an answer, but we won't have an answer. So you tell me how. If everything I mentioned is to tell me how it's more racist and evil today, unless we were repealing the 13th Amendment that I know about. So, so, so how is it? I have two examples. Go ahead. One is that perhaps it's, it just seems this way because of the ubiquitous nature of cell phone cameras where people can get a film of uh, police misconduct and brutality. But it seems like uh, over, uh, overzealous policing, uh, especially of uh, young black men, is worse than it was even a few years ago. And the other example is that in the last year since the election, uh, it's, uh, not even a year since the election. Um, there are, I believe, approximately... I'm sorry, what was it? Since when? Oh, you mean the selection. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, there were, uh, there have been, I think, about 300 laws proposed 
uh, in about 48 states by conservative legislators to, as David Brooks said last night on Washington Week, to essentially disenchant, uh, disenfranchising the voting ability of an entire race. <laughs> okay, well, number one, number one, those, first of all, those rule laws are not to disenfranchise black people. But, with that, but you and I can go, let's just take that out of the equation, okay? Let's take out of the equation for a minute. The point is, what I asked was, why all the riots that, from, from before Biden got in there? My, my, that's, it's, these change, you can't blame everything that's been happening the last couple of years, especially with all this racism and riots and how evil this country is and, and all this on rules that are, that are being proposed in states the last few months. That, that's a non sequitur. Okay, so I'm just saying, it has nothing to do with it. You can't use that to explain what's happened the last number of years. That's number one. Okay, that, so that, that, that one's already done. The other one, the other issue, though, is you're, asking, you're mentioning about with the police. And yeah, I can see that because of the one way that the media plays this. Keep in mind, there's more white people that are getting beaten up and killed by police than black people. Nominally, and that's a fact. Matter of fact, when, 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 when we saw what happened to George Floyd, Two things with that. First off, when people are posting white people getting beaten up by the police, those videos YouTube took down. You guys remember that? There were videos of white people getting beaten up. YouTube would strike them down. You would, yeah, I mean, you see that? Remember when we saw them on there? They'd strike them down. They didn't want the narrative to be challenged. Yeah, I've heard the number of 3,200 that they taken down. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I know a bunch of myself. That, that's, just, that's just one number I heard. That, that there's been 3,200 of them taken down. And there's been 400 of them be, taken down. 300? Oh, I can't remember exactly. Of a black person beating up a white person. Yeah. They've been taken down. And not to mention if the police officer happened to be black themselves. Like there's this black, George Floyd there's thing. Black, there's black police officers beating up because the guy misbehaved. Yeah. And it, they showed the misbehavior part, but they didn't show the rest of it. See, so like, like I've argued, and I've said on the air. You can still find those. I've talked, I've talk, no, exactly. You have to find these things. And then, of course, then they'll say, oh, you're, you're trying to cover for... No, it's, when I saw George Floyd, the issue, I didn't see a black man getting beaten up. I saw an American, an American citizen that was getting beat up by the police. And God knows, in this society, especially with 4409 and a lot of us in this community, you know, we have a certain love-hate relationship with the with law enforcement, you know, it's like a necessary evil or whatever you look at it. But the thing is, we don't say trust them and the system, and if they can, they will, as Ernie like to say. So, so you know, to, that, to me, that's what we saw. But that doesn't fit their narrative. Their narrative was, it has to be racial. And so when white people were defending George Floyd and it was going on, the system had to say, you can't even comment. Because you have white privilege, you have no you have no business commenting on this. Remember how many how many white groups they told us to shut up and sit down. You have no business or purpose commenting because they couldn't have the white and black communities come together, especially before the election. They couldn't have it. They had to make this racial. And I would sit back and say, well, how is this racial? Tell me how. Because George Floyd. You know, I mean, he's, when you think about it, you've got Chauvin, and I'm not saying Chauvin did a great job necessarily or anything about it, but Chauvin is mad, was, mad, was, she divorced him, was married to a non-white. His partner, police partner, was a non-white. The other police officer from the other, the other squad that was helping him keep Floyd on the ground was black. So, I mean, if you actually saw the other view of the camera, the other police officer holding Floyd's legs down was black. So you've got a white cop with a black cop both holding him down. His, his partner is Asian. His wife is non-white. And yet, somehow, this is all racial issue. It is complete crap. But that's the narrative in which they do. And so, and so then, then when we show other abuse from police officers with white people, they strike it down. This is what the world we've been living through that you're probably not aware of. That is why this whole thing is manipulated. Well, I guess, that's I, what we're doing. Yeah, I disagree with much of what you just said, but why don't you address the why? second Wait, 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 what did you The idea that white people were told to shut up when they were trying to comment on the way that George uh, Floyd was murdered or that black people are treated by 
we just in general. I think that's ridiculous to say that white people were told. Yeah. To no, we have to Facebook. No, we were told. We we're told to be quiet. Okay, well, I don't do Facebook right now. All right. Okay, forget that. <laughs> what about my second point? Go ahead. You've got about 300 laws that have been proposed. Many of them have passed in 48 states, where the conservatives just want to make it tougher for black folks. Can, can I ask students? That? Well, not Go ahead. Black, okay. The conservatives are trying to make it tougher for black folks, brown folks, and liberals in general to vote, like curbing the uh, early voting hours, or you can use your hunting club membership ID, but you can't use your student ID. There's a line to vote, and it's 100 degrees. You can't go up and give somebody a bottle of water. Come on, man. That's, not that's, that's not right. Okay. Well, go ahead. I'd like to remind you, Pat, that all of these laws that you say are racist and, and that the pundits say is racist, which they turn everything, like we've been saying, turns everything into racism today, affect everybody the same. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Russ, the, the, the souls to the polls movement where after the few Sundays before an election, Black folks go to church and then they have buses. They don't call it, they have buses to take them to the polls and Republican legislators want to do away with that. They want to do with, away with, with mail-in balloting, which is so convenient for so many people. I agree with them. You know why? Because that's how they stole the election. Oh, for God's sake. So, so the question is, why do you think if if everyone has to stand in line and everyone gets rained on and has the sun and has to be inconvenienced and take time off from work, how come most of them show up in the voting booth on voting day are conservatives? Actually, I mean, because it sounds like what you're saying is a racist thing, that black people are too lazy to show up at the poll, that they won't stand out in the sun, that they won't be there unless someone hands them a bottle of water. I don't hear conservatives complaining about so th this is why it seems really backwards. Frank, I didn't say that at all. No, no you said that. I said that if people have to wait in line mm -hmm. for long periods of time, if they need water, okay. what is so wrong with having a better procedure such as more voting places, more voting machines, Fine. the ability to go Agreed. to the people Fine. the bottom of the But okay. that's not what the Republicans okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Republicans are arguing after curtailing the number of hours and the number of places available for people to vote in general. And that impacts certain segments of society more than others. Pat, you specific, I don't want to get too bogged in this topic, it's a low topic, but I'll tell you, each of these things you're pointing out, okay, we have to, for me, for you and I, have a legitimate conversation, you know, I, I have to look at each law to explain why we're doing it. Because I'm not going to go with the CNN version of what their explanation is. They just spin everything at this point. So I don't even trust them. But let's just say, fine, they're, they're making the hours longer or shorter. They're allowing water, not allowing water. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that the concern is. You said it originally when you started talking that this is because Republicans mm -hmm. were trying to stop brown people and black people from getting to the polls. You said that. So why? That's what you said. So whatever problem that you think the conservatives are making voting more challenging one or the other, how does that affect minorities? In other words, how is it that it becomes a race issue? Now, I would argue, and many of us here would say that you should be in line because, and paper ballots, and you show up, and that's how you vote. Yeah. Keep in mind, just think for a moment, how our ancestors did. They had it, think about it, in November. November is usually snowing, okay? Because remember, we didn't have Arizona as a state yet. You had 13 colonies, 13 states. So November, I always wondered why they didn't have it in like June. <laughs> what do you even think about it? Why yeah. November? Because it's nice and harder. You have ice, you have snow, it's cold. People lived in log cabins, right? I mean, and then to get to the pole, it wasn't like you had to, well, I want a mailbox outside within five feet of my front door, which is what we heard this last time. You had to get, you had to get if you even had a horse, you had to walk, you know, miles. To town. I mean, people live in farm communities. They had to walk hours 
in the cold. God, I sound like it's a running joke, but I mean, that's what it was. They were they walking this. And then they stood in line, if there even was a line, but they walked with hardships to get there to vote on a one specific day. They didn't say, well, since we don't have public transportation, we don't have central heating, and it is cold, and my brain, and this and that, I want two weeks in order to vote. So I, no, it was one day. It was a privileged day that they all made do to do that. So when you understand from that perspective, Americans didn't complain. They looked at it as an honor to do it. And yet today, especially in this last election, you've got people saying that if I don't have a mailbox here, or if I don't get a bottle of water, or if I don't get a, a, a pedicure, you know, on the way to the to the to the poll, then there's racism and voter suppression and all of this. That's that's lunacy. Frank, if the I was suppression. I'll tell you, if, if, if the Republicans were <laughs> trying to suppress the vote all over the country, what? they would not have the formulation of groups like the Lincoln Project, and you wouldn't have probably close to a million Republicans, die the wound Republicans, that since the election and the shenanigans that have taken place since then regarding trying to change election laws to make it tougher for a lot of people, you would not have close to a million people, if not way over a million people, who have changed their registration from Republican to independent, sometimes Democrat, because they're done with the Republican Party trying to win by hook or crook instead of the other one. Well, all I know is that the Democrats are the ones that kept changing the rules for voting. It was the Democrat states like Pennsylvania that changed the rule at the last minute that you didn't need a signature. Illegally. Wow. Illegally. I mean, why would you, why would you, if you're saying hook or crook, why would you change the, 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 the requirement to have a signature on your ballot? Why would you change how many days after the voting vault polls close in order to put your voting to, in order to have the, to accept the vote? Why would you change and allow all of a sudden group collections when you didn't do it before? I mean, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you don't know if that's the case. Yeah, I don't know. That's exactly what it was. In fact, in fact, I you probably don't know this. A lot of you guys, I don't know. January sixth, the insurrection, which was not an insurrection. You know why people went down there? It was because they were trying to have one last pressure on the Congress that was feeling all their political pressure to kick the, 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 the some of these audits back to the states to take one last count. And the one state that really stood out the night before January fifth. Some of you guys, some of you might know this. It was look this up. It was Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania, which is one of the states that, because of the signature problem, they the the, the, the state legislature was afraid of political pressure to take up the count again and say, okay, anything that didn't have a proper signature that we'll get rid of because the signature thing was still going to go to the Supreme Court at the time. Well. And the, on the January 5th or 4th, that, that evening, the Pennsylvania legislature changed their mind and said, if the Vice President Pence and if Congress decides not to authorize on that day and take it back to the states, we in Pennsylvania now agree that we will take that up. I mean, it might be a little too, little too late, but they agreed on it. And that was, that was what this meeting was. It was going walking down peacefully, going down to pressure these representatives to present some of these back to the states so we could do a full count with everybody. Democrats, Republicans, simply want to count, just like we're doing here in Arizona with the audit. And it was the Democrats that kept saying, no, no, we don't want to have this fleshed out. And it's a shame because, look, Joe Biden clearly won. Joe Biden is such the most popular president ever, and he got more votes than anyone possible. So we all know Joe Biden is the proper president. He got all the votes. But these dumbass Trump people in this room, including myself, you know, we still think that Biden didn't win. So here's how you handle this. You do a complete count with everybody watching, and then when Biden finally proves that he won by 20%, you get to sit there, the ultimate shot in front of, and shove up the ass of everyone in this room and every Trump person that Biden won and Trump did it. You're all a bunch of conspiracy nut jobs. This thing can be taken care of so quick, but the fact that your side keeps refusing to do a full count, you change the signatures, you change the dates, you change the rules, and the kicker is because of our two media, you don't even know your side is doing this. 
When they change the rules, do you think CNN tells their, 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 their viewers what they're doing? No. They sit there, and as they're changing, they're stealing from your pocket, they're pointing to the other person saying, ah, oh, look, look, you know, the Republicans, they're not giving water out, or they're a bunch of racists. Meanwhile, they're changing the rules, and you don't even know they're doing it. So that's how we're living in two different cultures of, of news and how your side, and maybe even Republicans, how they can get away with things that they couldn't before because literally we're not listening to each other. Germany, 1933. It's exactly what's happening. And we have the internet to flood everybody with a whole lot of new facts. Okay, quick two things. The, the fact that the rules were changed they were changed illegally. The U.S. Constitution clearly states that only the state legislatures can change the voting rules. They were changed by these slick lawsuits and these slick agreements between the Democrat Party and, and the powers that be. The second thing is, the, what makes, this, this begs the question, if voter ID, such as, as, as photo ID, if a person's too stupid, to, to be able to get voter ID, should they be allowed to vote? Yeah, there are lots of places where us where getting a proper picture ID for certain people, like especially old people, is very, very difficult. They don't drive anymore, so they don't need a driver's license anymore. They don't want to a hunting club. They're not a student. There's all kinds of reasons why someone, especially old, would really have to jump through hoops and be put through unbelievably difficult procedures in order to but, but, but get a picture. Pat, 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 these changes, these changes, these changes which they, they want to, they're, you're complaining about, are not making it tougher to vote, they're making it tougher to cheat. Oh, God. Where was the cheating anyway, Russ? They didn't even come up with it. You must be doing an audit right now. Yeah, what's that? We're doing an audit right now. I mean, that's that's the thing. Look, put it this way. Put it this way. Half this country thinks it's broken. So clearly, even if you think this is a it's a fair process, but it's the kicker. You don't think it's fair either because they're not getting water bottles. You think it's unfair. We're sitting there seeing rules being changed constantly, and 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 so we don't think it's fair. So maybe there's something wrong that we all need to agree on, and maybe having a voter ID. You need an ID for everything else in the world that we have to do. Why would a side be opposed to a voter ID to just simply make sure that everyone is represented fairly and equitably? Because a lot of people don't go through certain procedures or obstacles in life where they would have to have an, a picture ID to be able to do business. Sure they can. There's no reason why a citizen cannot get a picture ID. They make everything available. You want to get a vaccine, Uber will sit there and take you there. Trust me, you can get an ID in order to ride the bus or get a library card or whatever it is. And if you can't get a library card, then maybe you don't have you. How is you able to vote? This is not voter suppression of anybody. It's simply equal representation. That's all this is about. But every time you want something equality to count every vote, your side pulls the race card. That is always racist, as if that what you're basically saying is that the people who can't get a card are too stupid to figure it out. Maybe That's how I interpret that. Frank, maybe they're 80 years old, they're disabled, they have other maladies, and getting a picture ID is a rural pain. Every state that I've ever lived in, I've lived in about 40 of them, and I'm the 48. You may, when your driver's license expires, or they will not renew your license, they will give you a state issue ID. Now, they will actually give you one to travel with, because now to get on a plane, you have to have right. one that proves your citizenship, which means you've got to bring in your birth certificate to go to doctors. That's number one. Number two. Anyone who's disabled in this country can apply in any state I've been in, you can apply for an absentee ballot. It's a one-time application. Now, you don't have to show your ID when you apply for that absentee ballot. But what you do have to do is sign on the bottom of it that you are who you are and you did this vote. 
And if you didn't fill out the ballot, you have to swear who did. And they have to sign it too. Now that ballot comes to your house every year, okay? Sometimes even after you've passed on. Okay? So they never have to get out of their chair to go. But you want to talk about disenfranchised, let me give you one example. I live in Leisure World down here in Mesa. That's a senior community. <coughs> Every year since I've been there, they had a place for us to go to the clubhouse and, and vote. Last year, they changed it. They wanted us to go to the mall across the street. They were in a small room, and I couldn't even find it on the map. Now, if they were worried about COVID-19, our community is gated. They had very few cases. Why would they want us to go out and be exposed to the mall or anyone who come in? Is that whose fault that's supposed to be? I don't know whose fault it was. I'm just telling you that there are many things that go on that disenfranchise the vote. And that has nothing to do with race. Sometimes it has to do with senior people. Sometimes it has to do with other people. But it's not about blacks. <laughs> <laughs> to touch a point on about the elderly people and so on and so forth, in many cases they're going to be on some kind of public assistance, which is good. Okay? Is it also true that in many cases they will then get a photo ID with that? I don't know. I mean, I, I assume they would. In, in, in other words, if, if you're disabled, you're getting, you're getting direct deposit, you open up a bank account, you get a photo ID. Why doesn't that work for both? So it should be, it, it, this it, is it, not, it's a, it, it, it boils down to this. What is Avi Horowitz went around New York City and, and, and in, in Silicon Valley, and he asked black people, do you have a photo, do you have a photo ID? Well, yeah. Do you know any black people that don't have a photo ID? This is in, in Harlem. Yeah, I saw Do you know any, do you know where the DMV is to go into the DMV? Well, why are you being told you're stupid that you don't know how to get a photo ID? that you don't know where the DMV yeah. is. He went to Silicon Valley, asked white people the same thing about black people. They said, no, no, they don't, they don't know how to get a photo ID. They don't know where the DMV is. Ah, there's a bunch of videos. There's, there's a bunch yeah. of it. it yeah. it's, it's a fascinating study because here it is. White people are saying black people are too stupid to know where the DMV is to go down and get a state-issued ID. Right, they know exactly where all these services are. I mean, they, 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 a lot of them are on these different and, and and services. And, exactly. and Stacey Abrams is going around telling people that her, that black people, African Americans and African descent in this country are too stupid to get a photo ID. But she, she doesn't also tell them that if you don't have a photo ID, Georgia, Arizona, almost every other state has what they call a provisional ballot. It's a provisional ballot. If you don't have a photo ID, if you don't have a photo ID, if you don't have any ID, you can go down and you get a provisional ballot. You sign your name on that provisional ballot, you turn the ballot in, you vote it. They match the signature to the one you turned in, and you're good to vote. And the vote counts. Every state where you have a photo ID or not has a provisional ID. A provisional ballot. I would beg to differ regarding provisional ballots being counted. There are many states where just because you think you cast a provisional ballot does not mean it's really going to be counted. That's true. That's, that's because it's true. the election system. That's, that's absolutely true. If you can't prove that that's a valid, legitimate ballot signed under penalty of perjury, I am who I say I am, you don't know who voted for you. You don't have any idea who you voted for. That stuff is never revealed. The only thing that's revealed is the green envelope and the signature that has that this is a provisional ballot. I live at this address, boom, you want the done. Then that vote is counted. It does, I don't know whose name is on the ballot. I don't know who's I don't know who who the person voted for. All we know is that provisional ballot was, and you've been involved in this for a long time too, right? That that provisional ballot was counted. We don't know who it was for, but we know it was counted. And we know that. And, well, I've been on election boards three times, and there's a third component to that is they not only need to see that it's you, but they need to see your address because you have to prove that you're living in the precinct that you're voting in, which is also a problem. And if, and if you don't have an ID that shows your picture, 
you can show a utility bill that comes to that address and do your provisional ballot. Your vote is valid. It's the county that makes it invalid if that system is flawed. So, um, you know, it's, it's a perfect way to do that. And uh, people are not being disenfranchised by having to prove who they are. Originally, you had to be free white 21 and a landowner to vote because you had to have a stake in the game. And if, if and Ben Franklin said once people figure out they can vote their way into the treasury, we have lost the republic. Well, that was decades ago. And we lost and it. Now we have people. When I was a deputy registrar, you had to show your birth certificate or some other credential and your address and sit in front of me just like you do with a notary, raise your right hand, prove it was you, and I could register you to vote. When they started Motor Voter, we knew it was going to be lost. They had a guy that registered his cat with the address of under the 7th Avenue. You know, wait, 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 one second. I got to just a quick register comment. It's, it's interesting that the people on the left, they're the ones, if anybody, want the most regulations, restrictions, certifications, evidence-based whatever, fact-checking, everything to their level, otherwise they won't listen to you. But when it comes to the vote, it's like free-for-all, you know, like, oh, well, we got to check this, we got to go, oh, are you crazy, or are you crazy, like, it's astounding, the one thing that counts the most, they, 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 they hide from. And they'll find every way to spin it and say it's racist, and bigoted, and you don't like this person. And it's all very simple. It's a simple process, and that should be the alarm bell. You know, keep in mind, when the, when the Democrats almost when, when, when were fighting over the 2000 election, right. when we're fighting with Al Gore, remember the hanging chads? The hanging chads that went all the way to Supreme Court. We sat there with all the attorneys, and it was a month of sitting there, right? They didn't rush through the next president a month. And the whole media descended down there. And they sat there and we all watched them count. They didn't put cardboard up on all the windows. They didn't sit there and shut the whole process down. They didn't say it was fake news. They didn't say it was a conspiracy. They said, you know what? Uh, Gore might lose this. We need to put the entire attention of everything to make sure that every vote counts. Right? Wait, wait. So they went down and did that. And yet, this past election, what happens? At midnight, what, you got five states that randomly, never in history, shut down their, co their counting at the same time? And then they kept people out from looking? I mean, just if one state, if the state of Texas was about to vote for a Democrat, for Biden, or whoever it was, or for Kerry, if the state of Texas, and then Texas at, at midnight, suddenly shut down their counting, and then kicked everybody out, and then in the morning, suddenly, you know, Jeb Bush was the, was the lead person, don't you think you would at least be sitting here today and say, something didn't quite smell right about that, you know? I mean, wouldn't you maybe think that, with since how much you just don't trust conservatives? Well, imagine five states doing that at the same time, on top of all the rule changes that you're not even aware of. That's what happened. And now when they're trying to do an audit in Arizona, the left is calling bloody murder as if, as, 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 as if it's like, you know, like we're doing something wrong, where they should be helping us put this to bed, and if Biden really won, then we can really know. And by the way, one of my friends, Dr. Dr. Joanne Feaster, she's a patriot, she gives me private texts, she's been doing the audit in Arizona, and word on the street is, oh yeah, you're finishing up, word on the street is that um, good and bad news. The bad news is, of course, for people who just, well, we think Trump probably won. I mean, I think we did. Uh, I, I'm sure we did. But it's not like we're waiting for them to say, yeah, Trump won. What's happened apparently, and this is not ready for prime time yet, is that 25% of the ballots are missing. Oh. So therefore, no one that way, they, they don't take the crime that, whoo, how did that happen? 25% apparently, both presidential and down ballot, are missing. So therefore, in typical slimy lefty way of looking at this, they can no, no one can say Trump really did win. It's just, they're missing, oops, Epstein didn't kill himself, oops, I guess the cameras were off, oops. So that's what we're looking at now, is that every single safety precaution that should be in effect they're going to do it, oops. And they're going to say, well, this happened. Well, uh oh, Pluto was out of alignment. And this over here, oh, uh, the battery pack failed. And that's what we're going to be hearing. And your side is never going to hear this. All they're going to hear is, 
Trump didn't win Arizona. That's how they're going to spin it. Not sit there and say, how did 25% of the ballots did somehow disappear, and where are the safety measures, and why do we not simply go back to paper ballots and make this simple, because they don't want paper ballots, because that's where the accountability. You have, you, have, you, have, you have ID, so you can identify one person, one vote, and you do a paper ballot. Yeah. And none of this would be a problem again. Frank, are you saying that five states somehow in cahoots with each other at midnight all of a sudden change their voting laws so that the mail-in ballots that came in after midnight were not supposed to be counted, but we're going to allow them to be counted. Is yeah. That, is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. And they, they shut down. I'm sure you at least know that. Just having one state shut down, why five? All in the rust in, in the rust belt. It was it wasn't just Ark it wasn't just Alaska or Ram State. It was every state that Trump won in 2016 that he was in the lead in 2020. And these are the states that they thought Biden was going to win. The Rust Belt. They thought Biden being, you know, being the, 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 the blue dog Democrat, he would get those states. That's what Democrats always counted on. They called it the Rust Belt for that reason, the blue wall. Trump broke that. That is how he got in and shocked everyone. They just assumed that Hillary was the bad candidate, which she was. But if Biden was their secret case because he was always for the pro unions, they thought he was going to pull that away. He didn't. So when they realized that they were going to lose those states again at a higher percentage than the prior one, which he was, all of a sudden, only, only those states, they had, they had problems, they all shut down. Notice, no conservative states shut down. Florida didn't shut down. They got a lot of votes to count. Texas didn't shut down. They have a lot of California was already going Democrat. They didn't shut down, although I'm sure they had problems. No one else shut down. It was only those states, the very critical states, all at the same time. Can I ask you, do you think that's not at least suspicious? Frank. Yes or no? Do you find that suspicious? Yes. If you were a conservative, would you find that suspicious? The premise of your no, question is just incorrect. No, it's not incorrect. I thought that the five states that were in question were states that by state law, they had the right to count any uncounted ballots that came in via mail or were still uncounted from live voting at precincts could still be counted a number of days depending on the state after the election itself. But the Trump forces wanted the counting to stop at midnight. That's not true. The election. <laughs> That's not true. Totally incorrect. Wow. Those states do allow mail-in ballots to be counted. As long as they have been received, they can be counted. And they work. But these states call this basically on the probability of the outstanding mail-in ballots they, influencing the count that they have now. They've had videos, they have videos of trucks coming in and delivering these damn car freights of ballots into the back. You yeah. have post office, office workers, post office, office workers yeah. admitting what happens and they're being called in and the mystery truckloads being sent. I, I, I mean, it, it goes on and on. Yeah, plus thousands yeah. of affidavits. Yeah. yeah, that's right. They have affidavits they yeah. signed and none of that was being covered over the media. You're from Pennsylvania, but probably you yeah. follow a little closer. I yeah, I was. So I did. Yeah. Okay. The way I understand, you might be able to correct me on this one. Pennsylvania, the Secretary of State, Change the state law to when you could count ballots that were received after the election. They did. The statute said that they had to be received by whatever date it was, and then they'd still be counted. But they still received ballots four days after that that they counted, after the statute. That's what the legislature determined. Is that pretty correct? Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. No, no, you're no, right. Wait, wait. Here's, here's the key, though. Yeah. So they changed the rule. The Secretary of State changed it without the authority to change from the legislature. Right. In violation of the U.S. Constitution. All, all, the the Constitution. all the Secretary of State can do is what the legislature tells him to do. He can't do any more, and he can't do any less. Right. Yeah, well, basically, well, let me we'll make sure I get this right, but it was the, 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 the legislature, was, see, the legislature is supposed to change the rules for voting. But what happened was they couldn't get it through in time. They couldn't change it because that had to go through a full process. So the judge 
the judge right. changed it and allowed this, this, this allowance to accept ballots after the it closes statutory statute. So the judge changed it because it couldn't go through the process properly. Only the people through the legislature could change the vote voting rules. And even still, you don't change voting rules for the election that's coming up in two months. In name, of the, in name of the virus. That was yeah, 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 everything's always different because of COVID. Because you guys were so scared with CNN and death clock. It's like the, the rules went out the window. But the thing is, whenever you change the rules for an election, you never change it for the election that's coming up. It's for the one, you know, it's like another one out. Because otherwise it looks too, too stinky, right? Imagine if Republicans change the rules on how we accept ballots a month or two months before the election. I mean, I, if Republicans control the legislature and everything, and we just change the rules a month right before the election, wouldn't mean that's not done because it stinks to high heaven. Well, that's what happened in numerous states, including Pennsylvania. The problem was when Pennsylvania changed it, they couldn't even get through legislature because the legislature was not in session. They were in lockdown. So the judge said, well, I'm just going to do it anyway. And he changed the rule about when you can accept it on his own. So that, my friend, is why so many people were winning for Pennsylvania, at least, to have this thing go to the Supreme Court. And Pennsylvania had to review this. And that's why they changed their mind on January 5th saying, if you kick it back to us, we will take another look at this. So there was a lot more going on about, about these changes, you know? That's, that's the part where you know, your side just sees there's a bunch of racists trying to steal an election. In, in Pennsylvania, when they stopped the count about midnight, Trump was ahead by over 600,000 votes. Yeah. The next count that came out, now, now this is a state that's 50-50, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. Except Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Those are about 80-20, maybe. So when, they, when the counts came out, Biden had 570-some thousand votes. Trump had 35,000, 32,000 votes. The, the percentages, just, just using statistical, random statistical voters, in those, even in Bucks County or even in, the, in, in Allegheny County, which are heavily Democrats, in those two counties alone, even at 80-20, that didn't make any sense to me, just, just from a numbers point. Something told me, I'm not saying there was anything wrong. I don't know if there was or not. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. But if you just sit and apply what little bit I know about arithmetic, Common it doesn't sense. make any sense. Common sense. Yeah, I'd like to point out a couple of things that you may or may not know about. Okay, in every one of these five swing states, the people counting the absentee ballots, many of them have submitted affidavits that the ballots were pristine. They were not folded. Some of them yeah. had one mark on it, and it wasn't done they, by they, they, they didn't vote for any of the day on ballot. It was just the president. Right. It's like the people were rushing over those hours. They didn't put any other candidate for, for a representative or the local race. It was just president. So all the ones that came in at the last minute after midnight, the ones in question, were all, like he said, they weren't folded, there was nothing wrong with them, it was simply, like, they were all perfect, like they just came off a printing press, and they just had the president, by 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 And also, it wasn't a few Biden, a couple Trump, behind Trump, it was just, all of a sudden, Biden's all came in. In, in Michigan, for another example, in Michigan, John James, an African American, running for the Senate, Debbie Stadman, was ahead by about 100,000 votes when they shut down. He lost by 150,000. Yeah. Now the other yeah, thing. And an interesting thing, interesting thing about that is he's an American veteran and he's an African American. How did how did this happen? And especially in Antrim County, where 6,000 votes seem to magically not be accurate. Right. And the other point I was trying to bring up that you may or may not know, I don't have any idea where you get your information out or how much research you do. But the voting machines themselves are questioned highly. And because they can be programmed to be what you call a fractional vote, you know what that is? Okay, so you understand what that is. Now, part of Arizona audit, and this is what I'm waiting for, is they're taking those machines and they're taking 100 votes that were hand counted 
that has maybe Trump's name on it, and 100 that has Biden, and then running back to the machine to see what the machine reports. If the machine does not report exactly what that hand ballots or visually hand ballots do, then the machine has been tampered with. They have found these tampered with machines in every one of these five states. On top of that, which is even worse, okay, these machines were not supposed to be connected to the internet. They have all kinds of evidence and official testimony from people that are much smarter than I am about the internet. But I am pretty much familiar with IT and capturing signals across it that show that that account was sent overseas to a couple different places. It was modified and sent back to the United States and published. And you can actually see, there are YouTube videos, though there was, okay, I don't know what you're hearing but you can actually see the live reporting on CNN and ABC and CBS and report this, and a second later, a second, it changes. And votes come off of Trump's and are put on Biden's vote. You can see it in your eyes. I'd like to, if the audience is willing, hopefully, I'd like to switch to the Arizona vote that's now being counted, what you might be able to tell us. <laughs> uh, well, well, I don't know a whole lot, just through Dr. Feaster, but supposedly they're winding down. I had uh, volunteered to, uh, wanted to volunteer myself at the website to do it. I was, in, I was seeing patients in Seattle last week, so I was out for a little while, came back, and I want to do it now, and she said, looks like they're about to wind down. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's the last I heard, is that it, it seems like about 25% are gone, and it's how, but they're, they're taking their time with this, because they know if they just come out and say it quickly, it's going to be, you know, the, you know, the CNN's going to come out and just, just say, oh, conspiracy, and oh, it's crazy, fake news, I don't listen to them, racist. And all that crap's coming. So they want to get it all down. But the other thing is they're going deeper into the, 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 the down elections. Because that's where the secrets are. It's not about the president, which is what the left wants to think it's all about. We're just angry because Trump's not president. You know, that, that's not what this is. This is getting the voter integrity for as much as it's worth. Even Ernie Hancock agrees with that off the air. He, oh, it's amazing. You know, he's like, he's believe it or not, he's not so bad about voting. It's just not, not we don't trust it. So, but you got to get enough people to realize it's broken to finally have some sort of sort sort of uh, representation. You know, if you could communicate with uh, this person that you're talking yeah. about, you might suggest, or it could be suggested, that the way to handle the Missing balance is just simply to declare that they never existed. Well, those missing, yeah, well, those I mean, missing in balance. In other words, you, you can you declare that the, the total vote that they counted, they made an error. Yeah. That it didn't exist. And, it and, real. And, and by the way, Pat, also a lot of these were the machines, right? And when the machines, you know, the, 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 the government, the local government, and the companies began hiding the machines. So what they did was they didn't allow the people to have access to the machines, and then they would hide them. They would think they were supposed to be at a certain warehouse, and then they weren't. They're were moving around. And it was there was there was the company. Uh, what's the Dominion. name? Dominion. 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 And it was the legislature, including you know little slimy Republicans and Democrats, that were moving the machines around. And now here's the kicker. This is you can't get any more galling than this. It's now when I turn on Rachel Maddow. Okay, and your friends, I watch them, and guess what they said? They said, Arizona audit is all a joke because the machines have not been in custody. These stupid Republicans, they're, they haven't been in custody, so how can anything of merit come out? The kicker is what they don't report is, the reason they were in custody is because of their people who didn't allow them to have them in custody and played games and hid them around and moved them around so anything could happen to them on purpose. And then, when 25% of the count disappears, I wonder how that happened. So it, a lot of this, Pat, is the narrative of the full sequence of events that get us to this point. I think what happens is people pick and choose their version of what's convenient, and then they wonder why the other side is thinking what they're saying. But, yeah. Yeah, the other thing, too, it's happened to me personally, provisional vote. The vote roll is done by the Arizona by the DMV. Now, there are a lot of you. When you get drive like you're automatic. Yes. Unless you opt out. Unless you physically opt out, it's automatically done. Even if you're not. Now, since when? 
Doctors would talk about it, go to conferences, we figured, and then we decided to advance the response with a vaccine against it. This thing, doctors didn't even admit we even existed until February, most doctors. They think it wasn't even going to be a problem. We just learned about this virus and in less than one year created a vaccine to it. A virus that probably was made in a lab that's <laughs> special to hurt human beings. It's not even natural. So it's made up as a bioweapon and they're going to come up with a vi vaccine against something that we don't even understand and the doctors didn't have 20 years to talk about it. We had less than a year because of the quarantine, the conferences were shut down, and if doctors tried to talk about it on, online, which we did, we'd be shut down by liberals who would sit there and say, you're not allowed to talk about this. So how can you have a debate and discuss anything about a vaccine or any medication when you can't talk about it, you're not allowed to meet on it, and then you're going to rush it through and not have seven years, you're going to do it in two months, and then tell everyone that if you don't get it, you're anti-American and you want the rest of us to die. That is fascistic, and that is where the line has to be drawn. Sorry to get on my soapbox on that one. We have two last questions. <laughs> By the way, did you get vaccinated? You're safe. All right, at least you're safe from us. That's good. Right. I just wanted to say, yeah, everything you said, it all boils down that you can't have educated slaves. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Educated That's it. Oxymoron there. Uh, yeah. One would. more thing about the election that people might not know. There was a clip that we all saw repeatedly on TV of, of the girl in Georgia counting the ballot and then putting it in um, like a a FedEx type envelope, a cardboard envelope, and then putting it on the tray and then she would grab the other one. And Jovan Pulitzer did a slow motion clip of that. And when she turned over the cardboard envelope to fill it, there was a black and reddish orange logo. And he said, Does any, has anybody ever seen this logo? Where, which, where did that come from? Well, I have seen it, and guess where it is? And he went to a, a clip of the equivalent of FedEx in China and it was all on their FedEx type trucks. So what was a FedEx from China doing on an election counting table in Georgia? Wow. Wow. You know? And it was it was the same one that was shown on TV repeatedly. He just enlarged it and put it in slow motion. Thanks. Okay, I'm just if there's a mine is the last, I'd like to say, let's look at the big picture, folks. Let's go back to the twenty sixteen presidential election where when Trump won it when he wasn't supposed to on paper there was no way in the world he could possibly right. win it but he won it anyway and the democrat party and the communists never accepted him as a legitimate president of the united states and they said that they impeached him twice and he knew all the rest then we come to this election and we all have these legitimate possible complaints where the laws were changed illegally etc and nobody on the left everybody doesn't want to talk about it and remember to William Shakespeare, they protested too much. And if the Arizona audit alone, just the Arizona alone, doesn't prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that, you know, if folks, if they were as honest and pure as the newly fallen Lindy and Stone in the high Sierras that did legitimately, that they won the election legitimately, they would say, yeah, let's have it to prove that should make you guys look like a bunch of idiots. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. easiest yeah. way to deal with this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so so I have a bit, but last few points here. You have a quick, 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 yeah, quick point, real quick. The election in 2016 yeah. that Trump won, okay, they did the same thing. Hillary, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you got to admit, what they oh, did this time is really slick. They, 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 they <laughs> screwed right. the election. That's why Hillary Actually, it was clumsy was too. To win. That's why we know. The only reason Trump won was because more Republicans went to the polls than any other election in our history right. showed up to the polls. Now, so what did the Democrats learn? The Democrats learned that that's one element we can't control, that's how many people show up at the poll. Gee, isn't it strange that COVID-19 and the shutdown came before the next election to stop the people from coming to the polls? Gee, what a well, I'll tell you a couple of things. Well, then you we'll start winding some of these down. Uh, last, last points here. First off, you know, I didn't bring up economics uh, today, which I won't at this point, but you notice how China was the last major country to stop buying our debt, the main one. And you guys know when they stopped buying our debt? 
Just look at the M1 money supply. You guys have been watching the M1 money supply, right? You think most of you have been seeing it? It's like this. It just goes spikes. I mean, we know we're, what was been saying, you know, any day it's going to happen, Peter Schiff, any day, well, we're there. And we, I mean, even I'm saying, I mean, even, even you know, we're there because the M1 did this and started doing that in, this, in uh, January of 2020, right? Mm -hmm. now, now, it's interesting that what happened also in January 2020, or right around that time, was COVID, COVID yeah. right? So COVID was released at the same time that China stopped buying our debt. At the same time. But the not buying our debt got no news coverage because everything switched to the COVID world. Right. So the, it, it, what is the, the beyond the coincidence? And then, of course, it was all natural. And now the real life, well, we already knew it was man-made. I mean, again, your people didn't know it, but now you're figuring it out. And it was all man-made at the same time they were in the lab. Now, was it released on purpose? Because they were all ready now was the time? It seems so on one level because it was when the presidential election of the globalists that they were, were paying, you know, uh, the nationalist populist movement was taking over all of Europe, in the EU, in England, in France. I mean, this is not just Donald Trump, but they wanted to you know, get Trump. On the other hand, the other theory could be is that it was released by accident. And since they knew this was going to be a problem, this was the time that made as well, okay, you know, we already knew we were towards the end anyway, let's just do it now. One last thing, uh, a couple of things. Um, as far as with the rules, with the rules, uh, to, to, it's an area that I know, in all respect to you, if you're not seeing the other side, like I said before, a lot of this seems foreign to you. You're like, well, well why would you be doing changing rules and trying to crack down the keep <coughs> This, These are the concerns. One of the things that happened, because I followed the election law very closely, especially Pennsylvania, because I'm from Pennsylvania, and a lot of the states, I, the sites that I use, I follow the election laws very close. And one of the things that happened is, in general, generality, is that when the left would change the rules at the last minute, you might argue, well, why don't Republicans sit there and argue back? They did. They would file lawsuits. They'd say, you can't change. Well, then we'd go to the, to, to the, the judge, and these were, of course, <coughs> Democrat judges in these Democrat states, that the laws are being changed. They were never changed in conservative states. They were only being changed in Democrat states. So when Republicans, therefore, would challenge it, the judges would throw out the court, the, 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 the challenge, because the lawsuit, because they said, okay, you're accusing the Democrats of voter fraud for whatever they're doing? Yes, Your Honor. Well, uh, has voter fraud happened yet? No, it hasn't. Has the election happened yet? No, it hasn't. Well, since no voter fraud no can standing. claim, then the, pre the lawsuit is premature. We throw it out on grounds of no standing. <laughs> You have to wait until you can prove voter fraud. You have to wait for harm. You have to wait for harm. You have to wait for harm, exactly. So then all these lawsuits were thrown out. And then when, after the election, after when they're, they're shutting down voting polls and putting cardboard up and keeping people out and, and post office workers going, what the hell, how come you're being called out at 2 a.m. in the morning? I mean, I don't go all day, like you heard today. Then the lawsuits came about challenging. And then guess what they said? They were thrown out again. And they said it was too late. They said, well, what do you expect us to do if voter fraud happened? Are you expecting us to throw out the election? Yeah. Are you actually expecting us to, to discount and disenfranchise black people because black people voted and you, know, you want to be racist? You know, is that what they're going to do to you? So therefore, they, so this is how the box they get you in. Beforehand, they throw it out because it hasn't happened yet. Then after it happens, they say, well, it's too late. You should have done it before. That is what happened. You guys know. That's exactly yeah. what they exactly. did in every one of the states. The only case so. right now, the one case right now that's going on being heard on the merits yeah. in Hampton County, Michigan. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That's being heard on the merits right now. I'll, I'll definitely follow that one. I got the last couple things for you. This is I'll get off of that topic. Uh, last few things. First off, I always like to share, and I always like to hear from you guys too, if you can tell me privately, but what, what certain new sites that you guys like, because we're so decentralized now, information is becoming a currency, in a sense. I mean, it really is. So I wanted to say there was some, a, a new site that, uh, well, first off, Tim Pool, I listen to Tim Pool quite a bit. I think he's a very good, moderate balance to get an idea from all sides. I think he's a brilliant young man, despite his little black beanie, which is always funny, but he really is brilliant. Uh, and, and so I give a lot of credit to him. But he introduced me to a news aggregate site. It's called Grand, I'm sorry, Ground News. Ground News. And Pat, you actually might like this too, seriously. 
What's unique about it is it's an aggregate site that shows all the stories, but it shows how the stories are being covered. So how many Democrat or left-leaning sites are covering it, and how many sites on the right? So let's say if there's an earthquake, it would probably show you know 50 different you know, news guard proof sites are talking about it. That's because everyone's talking about the earthquake. But if it's talking about you know, changing the voter laws in the state or whatever, then maybe you're going to see more conservative publications printing it, and the Democrats are not running with it or, or whatever. So it's, it's very good to get an idea about how the other side of the country sees things, what they know, what they don't know. And that's something I argue on the show a lot, is if you don't listen to Rachel Maddow, and yeah, I listen to it, so you guys don't have to, Michael Rachel, so you guys don't have to do it. Thank you. But yeah, I know, you're welcome. Ernie doesn't pay me enough, trust me. Uh, but, but the thing is, 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 is it is important, and, and again, it's, I, I, every time, I just don't know what Pat's limit is. How's your blood pressure? I'll take it for free. I'll make sure you're doing okay. But I have utmost respect for him every time, as much as I like to, you know, back, back on, but, uh, you know, it's people like him who, do, who are crossing the barrier on the other side, and I think it's important. So thanks for being our blood Williams. Different skin color. Uh, so, so that's the thing. So I do like that. You said it's called Ground News. Yeah, it's called Ground News, and it's, it's an app. app. Yeah, you yeah. Got, it's just an app. Uh, you yeah. just download it off of... Do you have it? What, no, what's your uh, opinion on the Homewood Suites Hotel? On the what? Homewood Suites Hotel in okay. Scottsdale. You don't know what's going on? No, there? I've stayed they, there, but no, no. What's they bring them. You can see it for uh, immigration, uh, temporary uh, oh, immigration oh, facility. Oh, Are you serious? Go They're for harboring you. illegals uh, after dark. Oh, Is that all right? What's interesting on Homewood Suites Hotel, what, the people that are being housed there, yeah. Russian immigrants and Chinese immigrants. That's a bulk of the people. Now, how the hell did they get over here? Part of the deal. No, I mean, it's just it's it's Russian and Chinese. <coughs> it's, just, it's just that you know, you think you think well, it's the Central American people. No, that that one's primarily for and some of the residents that live around there. That's where I found out about it. Now, I shouldn't have said that's who's being housed there. What I should have said is. It's alleged by the people, but what I found out through all the years is a lot of time the scuttlebutt on the street turns out to be pretty darn accurate. Yep. If it's the people that live there, it's a, it's about a hundred, yeah, maybe two hundred feet from a school. Um, I, I go by there frequently to see. You, you never see anybody outside. There's always about maybe fifteen cars there. And every morning, about six or seven o'clock, there's a Willie I do me produce truck there. My question is, is what's an end, what's a produce truck doing there for an hour and a half, out of an hour and a half, in a vacant hotel? Yeah, we should be asking these questions. What? They're a racist. That's why. Well, <laughs> yes. and, and so, look, let me, let me, let me first do this up here, uh, just because uh, some of you guys have to go. Um, the other website I want to mention is Ground News. I mentioned that was a very good balance site. Even though you might not read it a lot, we'll get our stuff from Freedom Phoenix or other sites. But I think it's good just to get a real quick pulse of how the world or our country is seeing things. And you can do that world events too, not just national. So I, I think it's a good way to get a reflection. The other one is called Peak Prosperity. How many of you listen to Peak Prosperity? If not, I highly recommend Peak Prosperity. Uh, Dr. Chris Martinson, he's very similar, I'm very similar to him, you know, about my views, you know, libertarian, conservative, but at the same time, um, you know, a naturalist, you know, natural medicine and, and, and green energy, but not like a greenie, but, you know, self-sufficient, just a lot of this. He's a brilliant physician. He's the one that was breaking the COVID-19 story in this country before anyone. I learned about it in November of 2019 through Dr. Chris Martinson. He covers different mm -hmm. topics, but Peak Prosperity uh, is his new, uh, it's his channel basically. Check it out. I would subscribe. He does a great interview. What, what do you, where, do you, where do you find it? Where? where? He, he's where? on YouTube, although some of these things are getting banned. And so he has his own private channel now, like everyone's doing private subscription only. But you can catch most of his stuff on Peak Prosperity on YouTube, and you can watch a lot of his videos. Um, and then the last thing, I, uh, and also Steve Turley. If you don't listen yeah. to Steve Turley, I recommend yeah. him. He's very optimistic. He's kind of like a Rush Limbaugh flavor, but he does get into the academics of 
uh, uh, like a scholarly view of, uh, of nationalism, populism, of postmodernism. So when we talk about, like I do on the show, about the larger picture of what's going on in the world, this is not about Trump, right? He's a side effect of a deeper problem. Uh, that's why the liberals don't get it. So that's what he talks about. And the very last thing, and then I'm done, is uh, not to be a, a, a huckster after all this, because I'm enjoying chatting with you guys. Um, I am on the side, I really haven't talked much about it, but I'm becoming a distributor for um, the, the uh, aquaponic, the tower guard, if any of you guys have known about them. So we have this in our house. I just want to, I'll just show it around real quick. That's our aquaponic garden. Aww. That's in our kitchen. And uh, we have growing, I mean, we have kale and Swiss chard, and we have tomatoes and chilies, and um, okay, what else? We have four different lettuces and like, fancy lettuce. What else do we have? Oh, yeah, we have spearmint, and we have, uh, we have, we even have stevia. So we're growing our own fresh stevia. Is there sweet? That's what you're saying, you're going to add on the that's one that I made our own growing lights. Not just for anybody. Yeah, and there's, there's growing lights and such. And you can get one of these. This is the high end model for like a thousand dollars. And it's got to I mean, it has, it's, I mean, it's this one, the high, the big ones up to the ceiling. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, and there's a. Uh, we got tomatoes and all that growing. So I just want to point out, we don't get it through me necessarily, uh, but keep in mind, since this is becoming a food thing, as we we'll often say, it becomes a food issue when the economy goes. Think about the gasoline prices going up. Produce is usually a loss leader in supermarkets. You know, so that's going to go pretty quick. You know, not that we eat this every day, but we actually use it most days. We make our own salads and, and whatever else for it. So it's nice to be kind of off the grid enough. You can do it in an apartment or whatever. Um, but yeah, you can, you can check out yourself. If you want to get it through me, that's fine. Just uh, remember, I'll leave you just paper for me in your email, and I can contact you. But even though if you don't get it, think about that on your own. Uh, is a hydroponic garden. It's very easy if you don't have your own farm outside. And I'll tell you, I, I've killed so many things when we had our own garden outside. <laughs> this thing yeah. is dummy proof even for me. You just put the solutions in, and then every 15 minutes you hear the fountain, and it goes near the trickling water, which is nice and relaxing, and our cockatiel bird is right next to it. So I got the bird, and we got the garden, and uh, it's been it's been really fun. It's been paradise. It is, it really is. <laughs> it feels like, yeah, but it is funny when it sounded like. And, uh, uh, and then the other thing is, I'm going to end on a really odd note, which is a bidet. Uh, having a bidet, you might find funny. Uh, when I was in Japan, you, used bidet. you guys all know what a bidet is. Right? Yeah. So, you know, they're becoming in fashion now, especially the toilet paper crisis of last year. But I do want to point out that um, it is something else that our family's been doing things to, sh to cut down on costs with hyperinflation that's going to be hitting us. And this all rising or keeping over and above with inflation. The other is the toilet paper. When you actually count how much it's going to cost you per person per year, it's like $560 a year in toilet paper on average for a year's worth of toilet paper that a person goes through. And if you have two or three people in your house, you just you know, three times or whatever that's there. But if you get a bidet, you know, you can get one from it, a cheapy one that's $300 or $400, the higher end are around $800, that's what I have. It pays itself off in one year or so, and when toilet paper keeps going up for as much as it's going to keep going, it's just one of these costs that you just get rid of really quick. That is pretty neat to have, to be honest. And, uh, and then the, those are the two, and then the, uh, the, the third that I, yeah, the, oh, the third was a hybrid vehicle, is let's get a hybrid fuel happen. But that's it, guys. Thank you for having me here. I'll say it. Oh, yeah. I got a great job.